Okay. Hello, everyone. So as I've been introduced, I am professor of economics, something somewhere where everyone has to be and is taught to be rational minded. And before I start and embark you upon what rationality is and is it that we require it? Is it that brings us to the real motive of expedition in life? Is it something that actually brings to what we say a conclusion, a moment of epiphany or not? So before going on to that, I want to tell you a little something about my background, something where I'm coming from, my family. So my granddad, my grandfather, he was a very intellectual person, very mathematical oriented, very logical. And every morning, he would bestow his wide words upon me and my brother, thinking that the little kids are take and gonna restore them throughout their day at the school. Amans is many saying something very prominently and regularly that he would say to us as our morning goodbyes to our school was, what you are seeking is also seeking you. And he would say this is by the great poet Rumi. Keep this in mind and then he would kiss us goodbye and we would go off. I don't know about my brother though, but for myself I can speak. So throughout the day at the school, I would keep thinking about what he said. And this is about me. I would install what he would tell me. I won't trash it out because I know somewhere there is something to this story, something beyond it. And I was a little girl. Only thing that I could understand in that one line was seeking and seeking. Okay, something seeking, something seeking coming back at me. All right, okay. Years passed by and this thing really stayed with me and I've been developing on this very fact. What you are seeking is also seeking you. Okay, and how does it go? What is the next step to this? I would often have this little corner in my house, a cosmic sanctuary, I would call it. I would sit under the stars and would keep thinking about it. Oh, I think he wants me to get into the expedition of life. Sail my boat every day, think about where it's going, think about maybe having a good career at the end of the day. Oh, hard work is where he was telling me to be. All right, all right, I'll do that. I'll study hard, I'll get good grades. I would do all that. But then I would still think, was that all that he was saying? No, there was another seeking in the line as well. What was that about? What was that about? What needs to hit at me? Success, okay. All right, uh, I'll think about it. What more than that? And this is where, as I was developing, I was hit by, not a rock, I'm not injured, a little pebble, and it was like, uh, oh, okay. These moments, these moments which are beyond comprehension. You had never thought about it. What kind of moments are these? What kind of fulfillment is this? This beyond success, this beyond studying, this beyond getting good marks, this beyond my teachers appreciating me, beyond my parents being proud of me. What is this? Epiphany is what we say. That was a lot of moments of epiphany that I started to see around me. And I said, how are they coming my way? Coming my way, how is this happening? And many often I would just sit under the stars because as I told you, I had this cosmic sanctuary, not fancy, I'm just trying to portray it like that, a very cosmic sanctuary uh, at the top of the terrace of my house. And I would just sit there and I would just talk to her. Okay, can I have some more of these epiphanies? They are very addictive. I'm really liking these aha moments, you know, a certain high that it would get. Something I did not think. Everyone's taking an expedition, but I never thought of things beyond it. I said, can I have more of this? In a way, energy, spirit, God, everybody can bring it together and I can have more of these. And that's where the rational human mind was playing its part. It was telling me, you know what? If you get the two and the other two, you add them both, you get a four. It is that rational, it's that logical. So every time you want to achieve something, you want to experience something, something beyond your control, still you can do it because you are humans and you can do it. It's so logical. You just have to get the right ingredients for your recipe. I said, fine. And that's where I was failing. 
that particular thought was where I was failing because I couldn't bring it together. What was missing? I took epiphany moments very lightly, very granted. It would just happen. I want it, it would happen. No. We humans are, have, we have this rationality. We always want to optimize, we always want to maximize, and we think we can achieve it. But I'll tell you something, and something that I've learned through my discipline. Humans are predictably irrational. This is a term and the title of the book by a famous behavioral economist, Dan Airely, and he would say this very out loud, that we are predictably irrational, and don't worry, there's upside to irrationality. You know why? Irrationality is often understood as absence of rationality. If you say that I am irrational, that means, oh, person I need to keep a distance from. They can do anything. That's not the case. That's definitely not the case. You know what irrationality is? You know what irrationality is? It's simply the things that the rational mind, which you have from your knowledge, from the wisdom, from your skills, from your training, from your classroom, from your workplace, that you have acquired what is beyond that, that the, your rational mind cannot comprehend, that is irrationality. Rationality is a subset of irrationality. Irrationality is what you are. Are you absurd? Are you not able to make sense? No. You are irrational. You are free. Your mind is free. And it is in this freeness and liberation, you know what you get? Aha, moments like those epiphanies. Yes, you always set out a course. You think about starting your day. You think about starting your life. You have purpose. You embark on a journey. You hop on the ship. You move. End goal, yes, it is there. Yes, do your rational part. Definitely go for it. But do it 99. Take that as suggestion from the experiences that I have, do it 99. Don't do that one person, leave out that one person. I would often tell this to my students as well and they would laugh at me. This is one professor who is saying 99, why 99? Why not that one percent? And that one percent is where we are given the space for the other seeking part to come and inflow into you. If you are just putting it out 100%, I've done A, I've done B, I've C, and this will lead me to this, then that's where you're stopping. You just went halfway. You just went halfway. You did not experience the other half. You don't know how it tastes because you didn't let it come it through you. And for that, you have to give it space. It's air. It's energy. It's water. It doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have any any particular form to come to you. It will just come to you. And you cannot be very sure whether it will come or not. It's those moments. And this is the my epiphany, the my greatest epiphany that I felt throughout my life, that despite being in a very logical-oriented family, very mathematical-driven family, everything very disciplined, I had a convent education all throughout. But other than that, let there be some silliness, let there be some smiles, let there be something more than that. I don't know what name to give it, but let there be more of that. And this is where I preach, this is what I like to talk about. Have fun. I said that to my students when they were having an exam, just have fun. And they're like, she's gone mad. We are sweating it out. She's going mad because she doesn't have to give. She has said the paper. She's just laughing at us, mocking us. I said, trust me, guys. I am a good person. I'm telling you, you're going to have fun. And very honestly, I have proofs over here sitting. And they would say, yes, we had fun. Yes, it was there, and there were students and we, oh, those questions, ma'am, oh, those questions, where did you get it from? We had fun. So the dreaded subjects that I taught and I was given to teach became one of the fun-filled subjects. And that's what I'm telling you guys. I was seeking something. 
I went on that direction and I left a room. I left a room where the other part could also flow in. And it has given me a bond for life with the students. We across the board felt it through. It was such a pleasing journey. It was such a pleasing expedition. This is one example. I would say every day is an expedition. The day you get up, it starts the day that you sail your boat. And then take a course. Let the stars guide you sometimes. Do your homework. Mind you, if you don't do your homework, then that's, that's something wrong. That's a bad karma, I would say that. Do your homework. But just let the stars and the energies come to you. Feel their warmth on the coldest of the coldest nights. They will ignite this light in you, which we call as soul and keep you together. And this is what I've learned, and I really wanted to share this with you. Thank you for hearing me out. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you.